Okay, so in this video, we will see how we can use Maclaurin series to evaluate higher derivatives of a function at zero. If we wanted higher derivatives of a given function at a different point other than zero, well, instead of the Maclaurin series of the function, we would use the Taylor series of the function centered at the point of interest. For example, if we wanted higher derivatives of f at, say, five, then we would find the Maclaurin series of f of x centered at 5, and the solution would be pretty much the same. So here, the function we choose is x squared times cos of x cubed, and we want to find the 20th derivative of this function at 0, and the 25th derivative of this function at 0. Of course, if we're naive here, we differentiate this function 25 times, and then we can evaluate the 20th derivative at 0, and the 25th derivative at 0. But this will require a lot of work. Every time we'll have to use the product rule and the chain rule, and as we take derivatives of this function, the function will grow in complexity. If you don't believe me, well, try it out. Start differentiating f a few times, and you will see that the derivatives become rather complicated. So, Instead, we'll find these derivatives using a very subtle method using the Maclaurin series of f of x. So, well, what we really need here is the Maclaurin series of cos of x, and then we'll be good to go. So if you recall, cos of x, as a Maclaurin series, can be expressed in the following fashion. So this is the Maclaurin series of cos of x, and the equality is valid for all values of x. And because of this, we can replace x by anything we want. As we have here cos of x cubed, let's replace x by x cubed in the equality, which will give us that the cosine of x cubed, as a Maclaurin series, is equal to Well, if you take x cubed, then exponentiate to 2n, you have a double exponential, so you will multiply the exponents. So 3 times 2n is 6n, so x of the 6n over 2n factorial. Here's the Maclaurin series, therefore, for cos of x cubed. Well, the function is x squared times cos of x cubed, so let's just multiply across by x squared. So this implies that f of x is equal to x squared times cos of x cubed. Replacing that cos of x cubed by its Maclaurin series expansion, And with respect to n, x squared is a constant, so we can bring x squared inside the summation, which will give us the following Maclaurin series. Now, x squared times x to the 6n, we're multiplying the same base, so we can add the exponents, will give us x to the 6n plus 2 over 2n factorial. And now, we have the Maclaurin series of the function f of x, which is x squared cos of x cubed. And recall now the general formula for the Maclaurin series of f of x. It is given by the sum from 0 to infinity, the nth derivative of f at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. And so you can see, once you find the Maclaurin series of a given function of x, all higher derivatives of the function at 0 are part of the Maclaurin series. And they're all there as n goes from 0 to infinity. And we can just plug them out. So, 
let's find first the 20th derivative of f at 0. Well, if you look here, to have the 20th derivative of the function at 0, the power of x must also be the same, so it must be 20. So let's look at this term then. So we will have the 20th derivative at 0 over 20 factorial x to the 20. And we can also obtain from this Maclaurin series, as they are the same, the 20th power of x term. So here we ask, well, when will we have x to the 20? Well, when 6n plus 2 equals 20. And we can now solve for n. Subtract 2, 6n equals 18, divided by 6. 18 over 6, of course, is 3. So from this expression, we will get the 20th power of x when n equals 3. So let's plug in here n equals 3. We will get negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. x to the 6 times 3, 18 plus 2, 20 over 2 times 3, 6 factorial. And now think about this. Both series are equal. And now we've pulled out from the first series the multiple of the term x to the 20, and we've pulled out from the first series the multiple of x to the 20. But because both Maclaurin series are the same, the coefficients of x to the 20 must be the same. Which means that the 20th derivative of f at 0 over 20 factorial must equal negative 1 over 6 factorial. And we can now simply isolate for the 20th derivative of f at 0 by multiplying across by 20 factorial. So the 20th derivative of f at 0 is equal to negative 20 factorial over 6 factorial. So there you have it. So what's great about this is nowhere did we have to differentiate the function and 20 times at that. But from our knowledge of Maclaurin series, the general formula for any function of x, and the actual Maclaurin series in this special case, by equating both terms where the power of x was equal to 20, because both Maclaurin series are equal, they must have the same coefficients for every similar power of x, so the 20th derivative of f at 0 over 20 factorial was equal to negative 1 over 6 factorial, which implies that the 20th derivative of f at 0 is negative 20 factorial over 6 factorial. So think of how slick this is. If you would have obtained this directly, you would have had to differentiate f 20 times. You would have this monster expression. Then you plug in x equals 0, you simplify, and you would have obtained this as your final answer. But this would have required you much more work than these essentially 3 to 4 lines. But as we've said, we can apply the same technique to the 25th derivative as every single higher derivative of f at 0 is encoded in the Maclaurin series of f of x. So now we can pick out the 25th derivative. So again, the 25th derivative at 0 will come from the power of x to the 25. So if we have here, in this case, n is 25, so we have the 25th derivative of f at 0 times x to the 25 over 25 factorial. And from this Maclaurin series, well, this special case where f is x squared cos of x cubed, well, when will we have x to the 25 when 6n plus 2 equals 25, when 6n equals 23, when n equals 23 over 6. What's interesting here, of course, is that 
this is not an integer value. But n ranges from 0 to infinity, and n is always taking unintegral values, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So what this says here is the powers of x, 6n plus 2, will never be equal to 25. So the x of the 25 term is missing from the Maclaurin series. But if you think about this, if a power of x is missing, it's not really missing. It's only because its coefficient is equal to 0. So this tells us that because the x of the 25 term is not in the Maclaurin series, that it has a 0 coefficient. So it must be 0 times x to the 25. But again, we are equating coefficients, well, multiples of the same power of x from both Maclaurin series, but they're both equal. So this must be true. Therefore, if you think about this, the coefficients must be the same. So the 25th derivative of f at 0 over 25 factorial must be equal to 0. But if a fraction is 0, then the numerator must be 0. And so, it follows that the 25th derivative of our function at 0 is equal to 0. And that's it. So always remember that when the power of x is missing, it's not a problem. It really is there, but it has a 0 coefficient, which implies that the corresponding higher derivative at 0 is, of course, 0. And we could play this game forever. We could look for the 100th derivative of f at 0, and we'd simply again pick out the terms x to the 100, equate them, and isolate for the 100th derivative of f at 0. What's great about this is no matter how high of a higher derivative we want, we never have to differentiate the function f that many times. We simply have to pluck the terms from the Maclaurin series. And that's it.